Congressman Thad McCotter, Republican of Michigan, who's making noises about running for president. We can start right there. We saw a first last night, a candidate announcing during a debate. We've never had a candidate announce on top line. Will you make history right now, Congressman? No, but I thought Michelle was very deft in doing that. I think it accomplished its purpose. It clearly was one of the lead stories that came out of there, and I helped kick off what was a good night for her. All right. Well, we'll wait then maybe for next week for your announcement here on Top Line. But what you saw last night, does that make you think differently uh, about your intentions here? No, not particularly, because I wasn't particularly surprised by what was said. I wasn't particularly surprised by the approach of any of the candidates. But what I think that many people felt was that Mr. King is a very crafty and a very good interviewer. And I think the litmus test that was put forward was actually failed by the field. In a country in a war and a recession, the real choices are between bankruptcy and prosperity. They're between insecurity and security. They're not between Elvis and Johnny Cash. And I think <laughs> that some of the Republicans should have pointed that out at the time. Again, this is Mr. King's job. It is also the job of the candidates not to play small ball beltway politics or try to be liked, it is to point out continually the questions and the crises that face the United States. So how would you have handled that last night? If you get asked these questions like Coke or Pepsi, what's the response that you can expect to hear from a presidential candidate, McCotter? Well, what I would think you would hear, I would hope from any presidential candidate, would be just as I've said. The choice between Americans is between jobs and unemployment. It's between peace and security. And what we're facing between insecurity and security is between the Obama administration's policies, it is between the policies that have to get us through a very difficult time. You have to lay out the challenges that are in front of the country and the way that we're going to go. So I think that that's what they have to do. In many ways, again, they're playing the particulars, and I can understand why of where they're at. And I can understand why that they wanted to answer the question to be pleasing to the individual who asked it. But for the Republican primary electorate, that's not a particularly helpful question. One person that you've been quite critical of, uh, of course, is Mitt Romney, especially his uh, decision to to attack the, the bailout of the auto industry in, uh, in Michigan. Now, he has come out and defended his decision, saying, uh, and especially last night, he talked about it's the way that the bailout program was administered, uh, saying that it wasted a lot of money. What is your response to him on that? Could it have been done in a different way, what he calls a managed bankruptcy, instead of the government having to come and pour a lot of money in that was ultimately wasted in, in his, uh, the way he sees it? Well, I've taken issue with several of his positions, including his support for the Wall Street bailout, for climate change, and obviously for Romney Care in Massachusetts. But I also point out that, as he said, somehow he seems to think that the government's actions regarding uh, Detroit have now somehow backed up his policy of let Detroit go bankrupt. I would point out that the key difference there was to continue the loan process to the auto company so they could continue to work to go through the painful restructuring, not stop dead in their tracks. And the people of my district, the white collar, the blue collar, the associated job providers uh, that rely on the auto company and the entrepreneurs, they all understand this and I don't think they find that answer satisfactory. But in the end, when you look at what happened after the failure of the original bill to utilize green energy loans for the auto company to remove the red tape to allow them to continue to operate, what you had was a situation where $700 billion in Wall Street bailout money was parked in that sector on Wall Street, and you could either break some of it off to keep jobs on Main Street or leave it all there and watch working people go bankrupt. So I do not subscribe to the theory that somehow he has been vindicated, and I don't think anybody in my district believes that going bankrupt would have been better and leaving that $700 billion on, the, on Wall Street where they caused the problem would have been better. You, met, you mentioned taking issue with several Mitt Romney positions. We didn't see anyone really lay a glove on him last night. Do you think that's a mistake? What would you be saying about him on a debate stage like that should you get in the race? I'll say the same thing I say here. I say the same thing I say everywhere. And I say the same thing on your, on your show. I think that the mistakes some people make is that they think that one thing is one form is one form and another form is another. And I have no doubt that I will be, if I run, I will be reviled across the country in many quarters. But that comes with the territory. It's part of the vetting process, and it's part of what the Republican primary electorate, the independents, and yes, even the Democratic Party has to hear. They have to hear an honest difference of opinion, rather than simply talk about necessarily what you may wish to do or why President Obama does what he does. You also have to make distinctions within a primary between yourselves and the others, and how you intend to move the country forward, and how you intend to unite both the Tea Party wings and the establishment wings of the party to do it. So I think that but when you start to go into this and you start to flinch from trying to say one thing on a TV show and say one thing in person. It's not going to work. 
you have to be willing to do that. You have to be able to do it or, not, it, or at least not start the process of saying something and not being able to back it up later. So to be clear, you've got significant issues with some of the positions that Mitt Romney has taken. Is that, is that, is that right? You think he's got some major flaws as a candidate. You've made that clear. Well, it's not just Mr. Romney. It's anyone who voted for the Wall Street bailout. Anyone who thought it was okay to leave it all there instead of trying to help Main Street with some of it. These are issues that I've been on, I've been in the lead on from day one, and I will continue to be. So it's not just one individual. If you look at the people across the spectrum, very many people in the Republican Party supported the Wall Street bailout. You still have people saying that it worked. And the reality is, is the banks are not fixed. We have to recapitalize the banks. We have to use the means at our disposal to free up that flow of capital so that the entrepreneurs and the job providers and the people who are looking for jobs can find them as the economy can take off. If you do not fix what happened with the failed Wall Street bailout, you're going to have what I call a flooded engine economically. As you know, when you start your car, if you put too much gas in, the spark plugs get damp and you can't turn it over. This is what's happening in the United States. The multipliers are the spark, but they're not getting the life's blood from the banking community because they haven't been reformed. Instead, they've just continued to pretend that somehow they're okay. And this is the glue that has to hold together every economic policy that comes down. All right, last question, last 15 seconds that we have here. You said in a recent interview, the window's closing on your decision timetable. When are we gonna hear the Congressman McCotter announcement? Right before the window closes. Uh, well said. This month, how about that? Is it going to be this month? Uh, it'll be right before the window closes. <laughs> All right, there we go. There he, we knows, go. he knows guitars. He also knows windows. Congressman Thad McCotter, Republican from Michigan. Thanks for being here on Top Line. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.